I was reading this book called Man's Search for Meaning. In that book, he has a quote from Nietzsche, and it says, he who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. So there's the answer of how we build our willpower. If we focus on the kutastha, the spiritual eye, keep pulling our energy up, have an unwavering focus in our search for God, in our belief for God. It will deepen our faith, it will strengthen our willpower, and it will make the prayers more and more sweeter. Swamiji once had asked Master, Sir, what is faith? How does one develop faith? And Master replied, faith comes with direct personal experience. And he quoted St. Paul, which I found so beautiful. He said, according to St. Paul, faith is the proof of things unseen. Faith is the proof of things unseen. So the deeper our experience of truth, the greater the faith we have. And then I tried to connect all of this into the visualization I had. So as my faith deepens, as my willpower increases, that super highway that we are going on to meet God one day, there are less bumps on that super highway. The journey becomes smoother. The prayers become sweeter. Our yearning for God increases. So faith reinforces our prayers. Prayers reinforce our faith. Faith becomes a call to prayer. Prayer becomes a call to faith. So that's faith. It's the proof of things unknown. So what's the definition of prayer? I found this, uh, I did some looking up on Google and other places and master's books and conversations and articles and this definition really uh, stood out at me. It says, prayer is an evolving, spontaneous and individual means of interacting with God. It's evolving, it's individual and it's spontaneous. So when we are praying and we are connecting with God, we have our own unique way of attuning with Him, of opening our hearts, of bringing His light into our lives, of cooperating with grace, and feeling that, feeling that immeasurable joy in our souls. So Master had said that chanting is half the battle and prayers are chants. So it very might well be that faith is the other half of the battle. So when we have faith and we have prayer, we have the weapons to fight this delusion that we are in, this drudgery that we are in, every other thing that is pulling us away from spirit to reach the truth, to reach nirvana. So we not need to constantly test our faith through attunement and our cooperation with God's grace. One of the challenges with an environment like we are in today is sometimes our meditations become dry. Sometimes the energy starts flowing downwards. That is where we need to really cling on to master with everything that we have, with every breath, every thought, and with every atom of our being. Otherwise, we get lost in dogma, we get lost in blind faith, 
we get lost in unsubstantiated beliefs. So as Padma was reading from affirmations, the filter through which we see truth disappears. So in the conversations with uh, Yogananda book, there's a very nice example of um, blind faith or dogma or, you know, essentially foolishness, <laughs> where two women walks up to um, Yogananda and says, sir, we actually don't lock our cars and we'll just, you know, leave it because we have faith in God that nothing's going to happen. And Master says, well, that's foolish because things can get stolen. And, well, one day they had jewelry in the car and left it open, unlocked, and got stolen. And then Master says that do not tempt God to do things that you can easily do. And he has always taught us to balance common sense with equanimity. Otherwise, these beliefs become like crutches. And we do not have that willpower to really pull our energy up so that we are accountable to magnetize ourselves in our search for truth. Very similar to when uh, Satan had tempted Jesus to throw himself off the temple. And Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So it's really important that we bring Master in our lives to receive his grace, the grace of the Divine Mother. But it's our individual efforts that really pulls the energy up, that fuels that caravan on that highway of faith to take us to that state of infinite bliss of samadhi. Now, what is the difference between uh, faith and belief? So, the example from the rays, there was one man who thought, you know, I will be able to uh, move the mountain to the sea and he just said, be thou moved into the sea. And uh, obviously, it did not happen. And the next morning, he saw it and said, I knew it. It would still be there. <laughs> so that's, be that's merely belief. There is no grace. There is no indescribable joy. There is no expansion in that. That is the fundamental difference. Now, we all know, we all drive on freeways and highways, and there are bumps in the road. So one of the bumps, and this is how Master, when he took human form, he became like one of us to show us the way. He explains in uh, one of his articles that I remembered the day when for the first time, unlooked for, from behind the clouds of drudgery of routine meditation habits, the aurora of bliss suddenly burst upon my consciousness. It surpassed my expectations, joy indescribable. Drudgery of routine meditation habits? Master telling us that? That's a lesson for us. That yes, we will have those bumps and those potholes in our journey. But we should not question our faith. Those are all tests that are actually asking us to go even more deeper, to make our experiences even more personal, to attune even more deeply, ever more deeply, to feel infinity in our hearts. Now, I would also want to touch upon the effects of faith and prayer. So one of the things that Swamiji has left us, Swami Kriyananda, founder of Ananda Church, has left us as part of his lasting legacy is spiritual magnetism. 
So as we are energizing our astral spine, we are magnetizing ourselves. And through that is flowing, sorry, through that is flowing a divine energy that we are grateful, lucky, and thankful to share with the world. Swamiji had asked Master, Sir, have I been in our, your disciple in previous lives? And Master said, yes. Many of us have felt more closer to Swamiji after his passing than when he was in body. So now if you relate this to the faith superhighway, it transcends lifetimes. It transcends space. It's a connection like no other. So it is really important that as we deepen our faith, we are sowing these good seeds of karma that takes us from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime to salvation. There's a good example of um, a devotee in Europe. So he went to uh, Saint Ramdas, another enlightened saint, and asked him, sir, would you take me as your disciple? And the saint said, no. Uh, Yogananda is your guru. I am not your guru, but, but sir, uh, Yogananda is uh, dead. He said, no. Yogananda is not dead. It is you who are dead. So great saints, great people, they are not limited by time and space. So this is again another example of faith, of the proof of things unseen. So when we are able to attune to that spirit, not to the physical body, when we are going on our caravan, happily in our prayer caravan, across the chasms of illusion, across the chasms of pain and poverty and despondence, sadness, anger, jealousy, and all of that, we reach God and we stay ever connected to our guru, our master. So it's not that the guru is not there. It's that we have to open our eyes, our spiritual eyes, through the kutastha chaitanya, the consciousness and the spiritual eye, to see him. So that is one effect where we see the faith and prayer transcend time and space and propels us in our journey to freedom. In our lives, in our physical world, it leads to fearlessness. Fearlessness, but that is something which is very sweet. It's without judgment, it's without anger, without rancor, without any kind of acrimony, without jealousy, without any of those emotional outbursts that we uh, typically have. Faith also becomes a glue that increases our devotion and our wisdom. So as we get imbued and intoxicated with that faith in our lives, we feel that evolving spontaneous nature of prayer. Our prayers become sweeter. Our experience become so beautiful, so melodious. Our meditations become deeper and it just reinforces itself. If for some reason the environment takes over, it goes the other way. And we get into this dreary delusions that dries up our meditation and really shakes our balance. Swamiji has written so many books and there's so many examples to follow. How we can actually bring willpower with force, with positive energy to really keep this energy moving. So our spiritual caravan, the prayer car, does not run out of fuel, right? 
So I was reading this book, uh, The New Path, which is, by the way, a fantastic book. I would urge everybody to read it, if you have not. And this chapter called, He Gathers Strength for the Climb. So I found the title very uh, intriguing, because, you know, when you're, let's say, you're climbing a mountain or walking up a steep slope um, during hiking, you may feel fatigued, right? As you go up, you lose energy, you know, that's physics. You you become weak, you become tired, and uh, you lose strength. So what's this all about? He gathers uh, a strength uh, for the climb. So these are examples of sheer willpower. So the moment we see fatigue, it is a feedback loop for us to repose our faith more and more in Divine Mother, to repose our faith more and more in Master and all the great yogis and spiritual leaders. Because the moment we see that and we are able to transcend the physical and limiting aspects of that pain, we can feel a gush of positive energy uh, in ourselves. So in that chapter, there are quite a few examples uh, one is, um, it starts off with a nightmare that uh, Swamiji used to have, where he would dream of a building, a very building of very dark vibrations, obviously, and um, on the top chamber, you know, there are prisoners who are being tortured. And finally, some of them get together, they manage to trick the torturers, and then they come out of the building, and then when he wakes up, he says, wow, that's my mind. The mind is kind of the top chamber of my building. And that is where all the torture is happening. So we need to calm our mind, the equanimity, the, the calmness, the centeredness, where we can actually free our mind so we can open our hearts and feel that positive vibration. And then anything is possible. He goes on to give examples of how he passed uh, the Greek exam, if some of you might remember, that he was not good at it, and just a couple of nights before the exam, he convinced himself that, I am Greek. And then suddenly this language that he was afraid of, this new language, became his old friend. And that exam was particularly hard, and there were two people that passed, and he was one of them. And then one summer he was going to Mexico, and he didn't know much Spanish, and he said, well, you are a Mexican to himself. And a couple of weeks uh, after being there, he started speaking Spanish uh, uh, fluently. So these are examples of when we say yes, like Gyanamata said, you know, say yes and make it snappy. So we say yes to everything that comes in cooperation with grace. And then our car never runs out of fuel. Freeway is smooth, our prayers are beautiful, faith gives a great experience for us to drive the car, and the more we drive, the smoother the road becomes, and we keep driving. So faith becomes a call to prayer, and prayer becomes a call to faith. And there's this beautiful sentence at the end of that chapter. I would read it. It is striking that until my faith returned in all its former vitality. Lady Luck withheld from me further proofs of her favor. So we have to meet luck halfway. We have to meet faith halfway. We have to meet everything halfway, and that's our effort. We need the cooperation, cooperating with grace, we need to feel that indescribable joy that helps us attune to the great masters. That we have to put in that effort. And it's that willpower that drives us to move forward. And then we can hear the unbribable voice of our conscience ringing with clarity throughout our being. And I'll end with this wonderful quotation from Master, the epitome uh, testimonial of faith. 
for those who think me near, I will be near. Om peace. Amen. Thank you. My joys are dimly burning now in hope, awaiting thy coming.